Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today on the things you may have missed in Elden Ring series, we're going to be wrapping up the Shunning Grounds and it is going to be a big one. We're going to start off with one of the biggest catacombs in the game, along with an incredibly spicy optional boss and unlocking a whole entire ending to the game. So if you like the sound of this, please make sure you subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of the amazing content I've got coming up for you. And if you enjoy the video, please leave a like like and leave a comment because it helps the channel grow so much and thank you now we'll start out here at the Lanedell catacomb site of grace which we unlocked at the end of part one and we'll start going through Lanedell catacombs this is an absolute monster of a dungeon as i say and it contains three floors all of which look identical so you want to be super vigilant as you're progressing as to not get too lost straight away in this first room after you've come up the lift will be a load of spectral soldiers they will respawn perpetually until you break open this illusionary wall just here then you can take out this soldier and go through another one immediately afterwards where you'll find a ghost caller snail that you need to kill which will despawn all of the ghosts and stop any more from spawning you can also grab the Halig drake talisman plus one whilst you're here and then we'll go up the stairs into the next area here you can pull this lever which will open up the roof above you this has unlocked a shortcut back to the very first site of grace for the area so we won't go this way we'll head back down for now and now back at the site of grace we want to run down the stairs activate the summoning pool and then come forwards into the main dungeon feel free to beeline it past all of these zombies that spawn in the first area then directly in front of you just as you get to the top of the stairs you can take out these zombies and get yourself a ghost glove wart six be careful for a few explodey zombies in the next room. And then, as always with the fire breathing statues, make sure you time your runs carefully so you can get past it. And then you want to jump on top of it and send it back up again to head up into the room here with a putrid ogre. Once you've taken him out, you can get to the end of the room and get yourself a crucible scale talisman. This will reduce all damage that you take from critical hits. Now head out and back down. As we go back down the way we came, we can turn left here and come up the stairs. Be careful as you get to the top of the stairs because another ogre will be waiting around the corner. Once you've taken him out, you can progress forward where he just was, grabbing a Grave Glove Wart 9. There's nothing on this balcony, but you can now drop down here, grabbing a Grave Glove Wart 8 from the center of the room. And we're now on the second floor, which is where things start to get a little bit confusing. As you're progressing through, you'll see a door that looks like the boss room. And we did pull a lever earlier, so I was like, oh hell yes, I've unlocked the boss room. When actually, it's just a replica of the boss room on a different floor of the dungeon. Be careful because you will be ambushed by an ogre here on your right. And once you've taken them both out, you can grab yourself a Ghost Glove War 8 and a Golden Rune 11. Unfortunately, there's no more loot here. This room is a massive letdown. So now we'll run back the way we came, and once you get into the partially flooded room, we'll go up the stairs and continue progressing along floor number two. You can ignore the statue at the end of the hall and just continue going up the stairs. The two zombies will come to life and you can get a grave glove or eight once you've dealt with them. And then this is where things get even more confusing, because as you round the corner, you'll see the corpse of an ogre, which seemingly is the one you took out in the previous floor. But as we know, we're in a completely different part of the dungeon. So it gets really trippy now, because you're seeing corpses of the enemies you've beaten, despite the fact you're in a different area. So we'll deal with this ogre, along with this other zombie I somehow managed to miss. I don't know where he came from. Once they're dead, we'll progress through and hop down into the flooded room once more. But now we are on the third and final layer of the catacombs in this room few more zombies and a grave glove war eight there's another one that you can grab in the next room and then be very careful as you're running forwards here to the grave glove war nine because another ogre will ambush you and if your run's going anything like mine you're going to be fairly low on healing and fp by this point once he's dead we can run to the end of this corridor and hop out the window here once you've jumped out of the window do a 180 and head behind you now we're going to jump on top of the fire breathing statue but as we're on a different floor of the dungeon it will take us to a different room and in this version of the room there's another corridor leading off to the right Head down here and we'll finally be in a new area. Come all the way down this ladder once you've taken out the fanged imps. And here, don't do what I did and accidentally fall off to the room below. Along the top of this platform here is an item and also the lever that we need to open the door to the boss room. So I'm going to skip the next few minutes of footage and meet you back here without falling off this time. Now that we're back here, I'll come round to the right this time, grabbing the sacramental buds and now pull the lever for the boss room. 
Now you can jump down, head along the northwest path here, and finally you will be back at the start of the dungeon. So go and rest to replenish your items if you need to, and prepare for the boss. And the boss is Esgar, Priest of Blood, who is pretty easy, honestly. Very anticlimactic for such a hard and long dungeon. Just make sure you take out the dogs first so that it's a one-on-one -on -one fight and he should go down with no problems. He says as he just very nearly dies to blood loss. Try and be slightly less careless than me, and in theory, you should be fine. And finally, after some incredibly touch and go moments, because the boss ended up being a little bit harder than I first anticipated, once we do finally take him down, you're rewarded with the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, which is a very unique talisman I don't think I will ever use, which increases your attack power when in the vicinity of blood loss. We're done now, so I'll meet you back at the very first site of grace for this area, which is the underground roadside, and I'll see you there. Now that we're back here, head left out of the room, taking the northeast hallway, and right at the very end, we're finally going to go into that door that we opened right at the end on the right-hand side in the last part of the video. Soon as you get here, very carefully walk off the ledge right here. You'll drop down onto some broken stairs, and straight away you can take out this scarab to get a somber smithing stone six. Now head down the bottom of the stairs for a string and a warming stone, obviously two incredibly important items. <laughs> now round the corner there's a bunch of zombies and a few flowers that you can deal with if you wish or just run past them. And now as we come down these stairs we're going to do a 180 and go through the metal grate here, picking up the preserving boluses as we go. We will be exploring the other way and going straight forward in a later part, but we'll do this side area first to make sure that we're not missing anything. Straight after looting that item, you'll have turned right and headed up the first pipe. Deal with the basilisk in front of you. Be careful as another one will ambush you on the right. Once you've dealt with them, you'll see right by this dude that I just killed, there's a door that we currently can't open. So we'll head the only way that we can and turn right at the end of the hallway. Then up this tube, you'll come out to a flooded room with a putrid ogre. He is particularly more powerful than the rest, so be super careful as you're taking him out and you'll be rewarded with the omen bairn and the omen bairn is very similar to the wraith calling bell in that it uses fp to unleash wraiths to chase down foes i've never used it myself but i believe it's just a more powerful version of the wraith calling bell now we'll head up this big ladder at the top you'll see just behind us is another ladder we will eventually come to that and kick it down to unlock a shortcut but for now run straight out here and one thing I forget to do before fighting all the imps and traversing the pipes, as soon as you walk out, the door directly in front of you to the northwest, open that. That is a shortcut back to the roadside site of grace that we've been using. So make sure you open that door and unlock that shortcut before you progress the way that I am now going. Once you've done that, follow me along these pipes, taking out all the imps. There's a couple of items, but nothing of note, so I'll skim through it all. Then as you get right to the southeast edge here, on top of this pipe, you can jump off and follow below. From here you can hop onto the wooden walkway here and just at the end you'll get a golden rune 10 before turning right and heading through onto the platform I mentioned a minute ago. Kick down the ladder to unlock this shortcut. Once you've kicked down the ladder you'll see just below you there's a pipe with a big opening in it. Jump into this pipe. We will eventually go both ways but for now we're going to go southeast and start chasing this rat down. He takes a sharp left at this corner and all the way down this pipe. Then you want to drop down the hole in front of you. Be careful because an enemy will try and grab you from behind. You can grab this smithing stone and open up the gate to unlock a shortcut that we discovered earlier. Now right at the end of this pipe is a big ladder down into a room full of living jars. Be careful of the giant one, he isn't immediately targetable but he will attack you. Once you've looted everything here including the ritual pot, take the lift all the way down and you can unlock the forsaken depths site of grace. Prepare yourself, for we're about to go into a boss fight. At the end of the next few flights of stairs, once you've grabbed this smithing stone six, you'll come into the boss room of Moog the Omen. If you recall, we grabbed Moog's shackle in the previous video. Now you can use this to temporarily stun him and get some very powerful attacks off whilst he tries to recover. And doing that allows me to defeat him pretty damn quickly and grants us the reward of the Blood Flame Talons, along with a 100,000 runes. At the end of the room is a chest with the Erd Tree's favor plus one. And we're now going to be told off by Melania because she believes that we're attempting to follow the path of the Frenzied Flame and asks us to stop. And unfortunately for her, she's right. So rest up and I'll meet you back here for the next part of the video. We're just going to wrap up one more side path before we continue along with the main part of this area. 
So back in the partially flooded room with the super tough putrid ogre, you want to head up the ladder that we kicked down, jump back into the pipe, but this time head southwest and through the grate. This whole side area doesn't have anything tremendously important in, and it's super easy to explore. Just hug either the left wall or the right wall, and eventually you will discover all of the alcoves. In here, I'll leave you a quick checklist of all the items to make sure you don't miss anything during your exploration. There will be one smithing stone eight, one eye of yellow, and four smithing stone seven, along with a golden rune and a warming stone, but they're nowhere near as important. That truly is all you need for this part of the subterranean shedding grounds, so I'll leave it there, and once you've finished exploring, I'll meet you back for the next part. We're now finally going to finish exploring one more side path and then come on to the main real juicy part of the video. So I meet you now back at the underground roadside site of Grace and we're heading once more towards the northeast end of this area through the double doors that we opened up on the right. Before you drop down this time, just head to the end of these stairs and you can get a Grace Mimic, but that's all there is here. So now go back to the other end and very carefully drop down once again. I'll run past all the zombies and the flowers and this time instead of doing a 180 and running underneath the stairs we're going to carry on forwards you can get some fire grease off the corpse at the end of the ledge here then at the bottom of the stairs is a fuckload of enemies like so many flowers and basilisks so i'm just gonna run past them all you can grab a load of poison stones just here if you want and then the main reason we're here is just at the edge of the ledge here you can get the nomad ashes that's all there is for this section, so I'm going to chill here until I'm out of combat, and I'll meet you back for the most important part of this video. You meet me now just heading into the cathedral where we defeated Moog the Omen, and directly behind the chest that we opened, smash the altar here, and it will lower, revealing one of the most cool and terrifying areas in the game. Run along this plank, and make sure you're utilising the lock-on button a lot, because most of these are corpses, but some of them aren't. There's a few items in this first area, including five Grace Mimics and a Yellow Ember, along with one or two enemies that you want to be very careful that you take out so they can't ambush you. Once you're done there, just keep progressing forwards until you walk out onto the second plank. From here, you want to jump down to the northwest, and you can get the Frenzied's Cookbook too. Now progress to the other end of the plank, dealing with the enemies here, and grabbing a couple of bits of loot. From here, you're going to see me die. Actually less than I thought I would, but still maybe three or four times, because you have got the toughest platforming section in the game coming up now. I decided to get completely naked, because I don't know if this is true, but I've heard it helps you jump a bit further, and probably the placebo effect, but I just feel like it helps you control your character a bit better. I know that may sound crazy to some, but hopefully a few people agree with me. So whilst I'm talking you through this, I will ask the person editing if they can very kindly try and leave in my one successful attempt so you can see exactly how I got down so that it hopefully helps you out during your attempt. About halfway down, as we drop onto this coffin here, we can loot the inescapable frenzy spell along with a yellow ember just here and then right at the end of this walkway after we take out this enemy, the fingerprint stone shield which is strongly considered as the best shield in the game. I've never delved into shields myself, so I don't know the true power of this shield, but it does have an innate madness buildup of 70, which is, I think, probably the highest of any weapon in the game. So that is crazy. Also, you can imbue it with the Holy Ground Ash of War, which we took a which we took a very brief look into in a previous video. I believe it was the deep root depths and the ash of war holy ground looks incredible that paired with this shield oh you know what? i really want to try that out now maybe i'll do that <laughs> so yeah now that you've got this and whilst i've been jabbering on you'll see i've also been trying to get to this other item that's hidden in this little cloth tent hut structure here how the hell do you get here? Well, I've since done some research because I was way too curious, and there's two ways I can see. One way is to get one of the enemies here to use a frenzied flame spell on it and it will break, or apparently some people have had success just quitting out of the game and loading back in, and when they load back in, it will just be broken. But don't worry if you miss it, even though it does look like it's an epic item, it's just a note and I don't believe it's a note of any importance. So don't worry if you can't get that like I couldn't. We're not missing out on anything. Now we'll continue on down 
using lovely stairs rather than trying to jump from coffin to coffin. And right at the bottom here, we're finally close enough to the floor that we can just jump down and successfully land on solid ground. Oh, it's such a relief. It's such a good feeling. Like the sight of Grace, and if you've been progressing Hiatus questline, she will be here and she will advise you that you can go through and speak to the Three Fingers, but you must divest yourself of your possessions, i.e. you gotta be naked. Get naked, boys. I'm not going to let this cutscene play out, and I'm not going to show you most of the dialogue with Hayata either, because I'll be covering all of this in depth during her questline, which will hopefully be coming up in a week or two. The one thing I will show you is that once you have finished talking to her, she'll burst into flame, and left behind will be the Frenzied Flame Seal and five Frenzy Flame Stones. Now, the Frenzied Flame Seal is, in my opinion, the best seal in the game, because just like other seals that boost specific incantations, it will boost Frenzied Flame incantations. But more so than that, no other seal that I know of does this. It increases the madness buildup of your spells as well, because it has a passive 55 madness buildup, which makes this incredibly powerful, especially for PvP builds. Now, when you go and rest at the site of Grace, Melina will hate you so much. But again, I'm going to skim over that and we'll cover it at the end of Hayata's questline video along with an armor set that I'm just about to grab I'm not going to show you exactly where I've gone to grab it or even me looting it but I will do a little wave in it at the end of the video and give you a little sneak peek of the armor set that you can claim at the end of Hayata's questline for now let's cut away that footage and show you something else so we don't spoil anything and all I have left to say is thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one Bye-bye.